Hey crafty people, I'm Sarah, also known as Craft Nerd because I'm a nerd who loves to craft. Over the years I've dabbled in most types of crafting, although for the past decade or so I've been doing primarily card making and mixed media art. I've recently embarked on a junk journaling journey that I hope you'll join me on. So today is part two of our junk mail envelope turned into double tuck spot video. And in this video, we're gonna make tags to go in the tuck spots. Let's get crafting. Okay, so for our tags, they need to be tall and skinny to fit in our side tucks. Probably should have trimmed these down a little, but we're just gonna go with it and create some tall skinny tags. So I cut some pieces that are two inches wide and they are eight and a half inches long and I'm probably gonna trim them down once um, we get to that part after we've collaged on them a bit. And then I have another piece that I cut at four inches wide because I wanna collage on this and then cut it down so, and that's going to be for this one because I picked out, picked out these lovely lady stickers who are gonna go on the tags and peek out in our windows. And so what I wanna do is for that one, I want to collage uh, using a pattern, a clothing pattern. And I figured it would be easier to just do it on one big piece than two separate pieces. And I picked this up at um, my local thrift store. And so we're gonna start with that one. And I'm just gonna pick a piece of this that looks interesting. So I am gonna use Liquitex Matte Medium to glue a collage of that pattern paper onto my piece of paper that I'm gonna cut my tags from. And I picked up some silicone brushes. So this is, this is a piece of silicone and I'm gonna give that a try and see how I like it compared to an actual brush. Because with the silicone brushes, you can just let the glue dry on them and just peel them off as opposed to a regular brush that you need to wash. And now I'm just gonna rip up interesting bits and glue them down to make a nice little collage but I thought you know using pattern paper would be nice with our little fashion ladies. I'm just gonna apply a little bit and work in sections. My silicone bone folder also comes in handy here because I can use it to smooth out the matte medium and the paper. Now you, of course, can use whatever your preferred glue of choice for doing collage is. You can use glue stick, you can use our glitter glue, whatever you prefer. Um, I just like working with matte medium better than glue stick. And I like it because it dries matte as opposed to, say, Mod Podge, which you could definitely use for this project as well. Now that that's fully covered, I am gonna let it set it aside to dry. And actually, first I'm gonna do a top coat. Now I know there's a bunch 
hanging off, but it is a lot easier to trim this off once everything is dry than to try and do it now while bits are wet. So I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry and work on the other pieces. And of course, I'm gonna save all the strips I cut off and for like the completely plain bits, I'm gonna use that to stamp on and use for future collaging. So for the blue guy, I wanna use some Victoria Design printables and this is the library card folio. This was a freebie. And then I don't remember what this is called but, and I think this was also a freebie. Um, but I'm gonna use these to collage the two pieces that are gonna go into our blue and brown one. that these guys are done. You may have noticed when I was gluing stuff down that the ink was running a little bit because these are printables and I have a inkjet printer. So sometimes that will happen when I'm using uh, matte medium or Mod Podge to glue down. The ink will run because it's a very liquidy glue that I'm using. If that will bother you, I would not recommend using matte medium or uh, Mod Podge to glue your stuff down. And this is a printable from Rachel and Bella, and I will, of course, link her Etsy shop or their Etsy shop below. And I will include the name of the kits that I have used. All right, those are done and need to dry as well. Once everything is dry, we will decorate them. Okay, so I've gone ahead and backed all of the tags with some coffee dyed paper. And I will link the video below where I did the, showed you how I did the coffee dyeing with household items, because that's what these papers are from. Now for the tops of our tags, for these, I'm just going to do a regular old um, tab or tag shape. And I've got an old gift card that I created into a template for the angles for cutting off on a tag. And I don't know what I did with my scissors. All right, so I'm going to just cut off the little tag shape. Now, if you 
don't have an old gift card you can turn it into a template what you can do is just eyeball it and then stick it over here and use the piece you cut off to guide your next cut um, but I got my little template I'm gonna use that because it's a little bit easier So I somehow managed to switch to slow-mo while recording this portion of the video and strangely enough it seemed to go back to regular all on its own. I don't know what the phone did. Um, but I was able to speed up the video so that I'm working at a normal speed. But I sound a little bit like a chipmunk on the audio recording. Uh, so it's voiceover time. For the other tags I wanted to go a little fancier instead of just doing the notch sides. And I tried to create a template for my tags, and I was definitely on the struggle bus with that. Um, then I saw an M Scrap Buster video by Melina at Me Scrappy Crafter, and she made tabs without a tab punch. And I had one of those aha moments. The way And the way Melina created the tabs was by taking two rectangular scraps, cutting one slightly shorter than the other, and then she rounded the corners and glued them together. So that's what you can see me holding up here. So that's what I did to create this shape. I cut one piece as wide as my tag and a second piece slightly shorter and I used my corner rounder. I then used the small piece to create the template that would be easier to work with that you see sitting on the desk right there. So I lined it up at the top and then just traced around and cut it out. And I wanted to create one with a rounded top, so I just cut out a circle, lined that up in the middle of the well, first template to create my second template. And what's nice about this is that you can use this technique for any size tag. You just need to cut your first rec rectangle the same width as your tag, um, then cut a second piece slightly shorter, and for the rounded one, just cut out an appropriate size circle. For this template, I just lined it up at the top, but for the rounded top one, you have to hold it a little bit below the top of your tag to make sure you can cut the rounded curve out. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out all the tag tops, and those are all done, and now it is time to decorate. And for that, I'm gonna pull out the double-sided tuck spot envelopes we made because when we're decorating, we want to be sure that the items we put on the tag at the bottom part is going to actually show through the window since that was the whole point of using envelopes with windows. And I'm going to grab a bunch of stuff I've already fussy cut out, including some items from that same freebie uh, from Victoria Designs that I got the library cards from. And I will link her Etsy shop below. I know usually when she does the freebies for if you subscribe to her newsletter, they coordinate with a kit she has for sale in her shop. I think we're going to push this guy over as far as it will go and just glue it down. Printouts that I had had little like nibs as part of it and so I took and cut out fussy cut out all the little nibs and put them on as the butterfly bodies so I did that for all the butterflies and so we're just gonna add some butterflies to this and I'm using barely art glue because that's the one I grabbed And that tag is done. So we've got the two tags that are gonna go with this pocket. It's a 
that one will fit in there and fit in here and of course my books are too far over and what I may do you know what I have more of the book This, so it looks like there's two stacks of books on there. And am I on screen? I am, yay! Now, when we tuck it in, there will be some books showing in our tuck spot, in our, or in our window. There we go. And you've got a bit of the butterfly sticking out. Excellent. What I think I may do is round our corners. All right, let's move on to finishing the other ones. These guys, they're going with this one. So let's double check what we're putting on which so that we don't have the same issue as we did last time. Now, I, while off camera, put some washi tape along the edges to reinforce the edges of these because you'll remember this one we just inked. We didn't put any papers on top, so I wanted to reinforce the sides that are going to get the most use with stuff being slid in and out. So I think this one is going to get... Yep, I like how that looks, so let's pull that out. Our laser cut elements from 49 and Market, and I believe it's from the Rouge pack. Go ahead and round the corners on the bottom for this. And then I've got some other bits and bobs to go on. So this is the laser cut element. Am I on screen? Yes. Um, these were some faux stamps I created using um, distress ink. I distress inked white paper, so you can see white, and then stamped with the same color of distress ink. And the stamp set is, I use stamp collector. And then the heart is uh, left over from the show some style project I did, and it's from a uh, Rachel Bella Crafts uh, digital. I think this was from a freebie. So yeah, I kind of went through my stash and pulled stuff out so that the decorating would go faster. Since I don't think you need to see me. Ah. Uh, mucking about trying to make decisions on what's going to go where. And what's really funny is it's taken me a little while to, ooh, this is not wanting, you know, we're going to get some art out. I am finding, having gotten the barely art, that I think I like art glitter glue better. I, I, I feel like the barely art definitely does a little bit better with vellum. And if it's something you're going to be fussing around with so that you need time to reposition, it's a better option than the art glitter glue because art glitter glue, once it is stuck, it is stuck. That sucker ain't moving. But I feel like the art glitter glue just adheres better and I like that it adheres quickly. All right, um, so again, another of my faux stamps and some leftover bits from Rachel Bella kits from my uh, Show Some Style video. I'll link that below. I believe that piece is from the Welsh Ephemera pack. That one may have been a freebie. I cannot remember which one, but I will link Rachel Bella's uh, Kofi and Etsy shop below so you can 
check out her digital kits. And then this is another one of the laser cuts from 49 and Market. So I am, I am doing my darndest to actually use the stuff I bought instead of having it sit and take up space in my home waiting to get some love. All right, so those two are done and they're gonna slip in like so. And I'm not bothered by the fact that the tags are sticking out a little. Oh, and I did not round this one's corner, so let's do that. Now you, of course, don't have to round corners if you don't want to. Um, it just tends to make them slide in and out of things a little easier than when you have a sharp pointing corner. Oh no. I should have put the piece a little further over. I am gonna see if there is another piece I can add in here just so that there's something that actually shows. So that's the third, second one done. Now our last one. Yeah, I'm going to use another scrap piece from uh, Rach and Bella kit. And this one I know is from the vintage pink. <laughs> I always want to call it Victorian pink. So I think we're going to just go with a little strip of that because we've got a lovely lady. So she needs something to stand on. And let's make sure we're going to place her correctly. let's finish decorating these guys so I've got again leftover bits from Rachel and Bella kits this is the label dies by Tim Holtz that I can't think of the name of and another oh no this is from Rachel and Bella kit as well I believe it's from the vintage pink but it might be from a freebie from last year I'm gonna ink the edges of this because I want it to stand out a little bit more. And I'm gonna use shabby shutters to do that. I've got one more element I want to add and I want to do something with them. So I've got some of the tiny tattered florals. It's a Tim Holtz dye. The leaves, I don't remember. I think they are probably um, memory box, but I will link them down or list them down below at the very least since memory box does discontinue their dyes and I've had those for quite some time and another set of leaves. Now these were all cut out of magazines or junk mail, but I feel like the flowers are a little dull and need a little something. So what I did was I pulled out my Kitsch Flamingo Distress Embossing Glaze. Now the embossing glaze is translucent, so that means that 
you will be able to see anything behind it. So I figured it'd just be a nice way to add a little bit more dimension to these flowers. I'm gonna grab scratch paper to do this over. And a second piece, I am gonna pull out some clear embossing ink. Now, if you're using an embossing glaze or an embossing powder, you're gonna need a clear embossing ink um, to get the powder to stick to whatever you're planning on embossing. And for this, I'm using a dauber because I have one and it's easier since I'm using doing it on little flowers. And then over my piece of paper, this way, if there's any spillage, I can pour it back into the container. I am going to grab a little scoop. I've got little scoops. I don't even remember where I got them. I've had them so long. Now I can just take this paper and dump the unused glaze back into the jar. Now, normally I would um, hold a piece with tweezers to heat emboss it so that the heat can circulate all around the piece. But given how small these guys are, I think it's going to be easier to leave them on my mat. And my mat is a silicone mat that is heat safe. You're, you're not gonna wanna do this unless you know what you're um, embossing on is heat safe. And so I'm gonna pull out my embossing gun and just heat these suckers up. All right, so there are our flowers. Now they're not perfect. It's a little, it's a little tough to eat <laughs> emboss stuff this small that's not like attached to something. Um, but it definitely adds a little bit more uh, interest to them and I like them a lot better now. So we're going to go ahead and add those onto these pieces. You know what, I think what I'm gonna end up doing is adding a dot in the center of liquid pearls just to give those flowers a little bit more dimension. All right, so I decided our tags needed toppers. So I've got a couple scrap pieces of lace that I uh, colored with Distress ink. And this was a leftover from here. And I'm pretty sure I must have used peeled paint for that because I just did this with shabby shutters and they're not quite the same, but it could also be because this is a cream lace and I may have used white for this. Not 100% sure. It just went with Distress ink and a green. And I'm going to use my fabric tack to attach those to the top on these tags. All 
For this one, I am going to do gold eyelets and add a little eyelash, uh, eyelash trim to it in green. Memory Keepers uh, Crocodile is fairly new to me um, and I'm still getting used to it. Although I must say, I have an old school eyelet setter set that the hammer's from and it was a Making Memories set. And quite frankly, I think I like it better <laughs> for setting eyelets. The problem being is it's uh, ridiculously noisy because you are hammering the thing in. Alright, so I'm going to use a needle threader to try and help this process along. So we're not here for three weeks as I try and thread this through. And then for the last one, I am just going to add a couple of brads. And I don't know if it will focus, let's see. So uh, this one's got a screw head pattern in it. And I believe this one's got like a, that one's a Phillips and this is a flathead <laughs> screw shape in it. So we're just gonna add those to the top of that. And they're really small, so I need a really small hole. So I'm going to use a 1 16th hole on this. Just going to kind of eyeball where it's going to go. Pop in the brad and not be anywhere near on center. And this is why me eyeballing stuff is a bad idea. Because, yeah, that's way off center. Oh, well. Too late now. Yeah, I should not eyeball things because that isn't even anywhere near to center on that sucker. Okay, we're not going to eyeball this one. We're going to figure out where the center is. So this is a centering ruler, so it's got the zero in the middle. And so you just line up so that you've got the same amount of ticks on either side. And it tells you where your center is. I'm gonna grab a pencil and draw a line, which I can erase after I put the hole in, but that will give me a guide for where the hole goes. And then I'll just grab an eraser. And remember what drawer things are in. I've been doing some reorganizing and sometimes it takes me a minute to remember where I put stuff. All right, I'm gonna stick this brad in here. Okay, that's way better. I should never eyeball center anything because my eyeballs don't know center. All right, so I'm just gonna take some liquid pearl in key lime and just add a little dot to the center. So I'm just going to add a little dot here and now when you're using liquid pearls you can make dimensional dots but because these are going into those tuck spots I don't want to add too much dimension because these are already on the thick side with the two layers of the flowers so I'm just going to kind of swirl it around just to add a little interest to the center of the flowers but I'm not going to um, do like a dot that will be dimensional. Set those aside to dry somewhere where I'm not gonna stick my fingers in them because that's what usually happens when I use liquid pearls. So here are all the tags we made to go into our double tuck spot it's made from junk mailers. That's all for today. Um, 
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to do all the things that let YouTube know you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave me a comment down below. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Thanks for joining me and happy crafting.